Yesterday I did a short video of one of the president's guards of honor. That is where the president has a pass out parade whereby he walks inspecting the lines of uh, soldiers and seeing if all is well. And someone asked me, I can't remember the name but I'll pin his comment uh, somewhere in this video. He asked me what is the purpose of that fellow who is walking in between the lines of guards. Because as the president is walking, you will notice that there is someone else who is walking alone in the lane that is behind the president, parallel to him. If the president is moving this way, he's moving that way, but there is guards in between them. So the question was, what is the purpose of that particular person? Now I'll play you the video, a short part of it. I just want you to spot the fellow in a black suit, the one who is walking behind the lane behind the president. Before we proceed, just have a look at this video. Now that fellow is a secret service officer. That is a group that is specifically tasked with the protection of the head of state. They don't protect governors, they don't protect senators, they protect the head of state only. The only exception to that would be DP Rigadi Gashagwa. Now let's move on to their functions. I'm sure you noticed the one who is walking behind the lane that the president is on, but there is another one who is walking directly behind the president. There's two of them. But the one walking behind the president is not acting like an aide de camp, an ADC. What he's doing is not walking immediately behind the president. No. He's allowing the president to walk and be escorted by the commanders, but he's behind the president and the commanders. Why is that the case? Because he's keeping an eye on those commanders. And not just those commanders, they are one of the people that he's keeping an eye on, but to his left, there is a lane of guards, soldiers. So he's watching the soldiers, he's watching the commanders, and he's watching the president. So unlike an aide-de-camp whose role is more ceremonial and designed to bring prestige and honor to the president, that secret service officer who is walking directly behind the president and the commanders is there to provide security. Secret Service does not trust anybody, not even the GSU, not the military, nobody. They only trust themselves to protect the president. So I just wanted to clarify that the one walking behind the president is not ceremonial like the aide de camp. He is there and he is definitely carrying a weapon to protect the president. Another thing I am sure you have noticed in that particular video is that both of them, their coats are open. Their coats are open and they are holding on to one side. The reason is they have a loaded weapon there and I believe it is ready to go. If something happens, that is not the time to put in the magazine and cock, no. The gun is locked and loaded, safety is off. In case of anything, it's pull and fire. Not remove cock and what not, remove safety then fire, no. It's good to go. That is why their hand is ready and holding the coat. The other reason they are holding the coat is so that the civilians do not get to see the firearm that is beneath. I don't know if they are carrying a pistol or something else, but definitely they are holding their coat so that nobody can see what is beneath. Also, you know, the wind is blowing against them. They are standing in an open area. So if you don't hold the coat, it will be blown open and even enemies will get to know what it is you carry beneath that coat. So that is why the hand is there at all times. Then I want you to also notice something else in that particular video. The one who is walking behind the president's line, parallel to him, there is one who is walking behind the president and there is one who is walking behind that lane of soldiers, almost hidden. When it comes a time whereby they are intersecting, he will not cross until his fellow secret service officer has crossed, then he will join and go to the other lane behind them. Just look at this short part before we proceed. And the reason he is doing that, 
first and foremost is so that he does not interrupt or confuse the marching of the president and the commanders. And the second reason is so that he can stay invisible to the commanders. The commanders almost can't tell that he's there. By the time they are turning is when now he's moving to the next lane. Someone is there watching them but they can't keep an eye and constantly know where this fellow is. As you are walking this side, he was here. As you are turning to the next lane, he has switched to the next lane and you did not cross paths anywhere. So he's almost incognito, hard to follow, hard to track. Also another point that I almost forgot. Remember how we said both of them have their coats open and each is holding uh, one side of the coat whereby the firearm is? I have noticed that they are holding different sides of the coat. One is holding the right and the other one is holding the left. Why is that the case? I have noticed that when they are walking through a lane of guards or soldiers, based on the positioning of their weapons, these guards who are on that parade, at any given time when the president is walking by, they are directly in between loaded firearms that are just adjacent to them. One of them is holding the right side because the soldiers are this side of him. The other one is holding the left side because the soldiers are on this side. The soldiers are sandwiched in between secret service officers who are carrying loaded firearms. So that in the event anyone tries anything, you can be taken out from the front and the back. Remember, as we said, the secret service trusts nobody. And I'll prove it to you before the end of this particular video. Now, I have not seen any evidence, but I would also like to believe that the president is also covered by snipers. I would like to believe that there are soldiers who have been trained and they are constantly on the lookout to take out any threat before it even manifests from 300 to 400 yards out. Also, the very airspace that the president occupies must always be shut down. You cannot go flying your private plane over any airspace that the president is directly beneath. Any aircraft that does so will have to be intercepted and guided out of that airspace or even shot down. Also, everywhere the president goes, there are signal jammers. Which is why many people, uh, remember when Barack Obama came to Kenya, people were saying that they could not pick their phone calls when they were near him because there are signal jammers. And part of that signal jammer, the role that it's designed to do, is to prevent two things from taking place. Number one, to prevent anyone from planting a bomb. If you know the president is going to be at Kasarani and you rush there to go plant a bomb close to the presidential dais, and then you're waiting for when the president comes and they're seated with all those people, you trigger the bomb. It will not go off because they are signal jammers. That signal that is designed to trigger that particular bomb cannot go off. It will only go off after the president has left. And in which case the president will be safe. Whatever it is you are planning will not happen. And the second reason is because we have seen people who are trying to take out leaders using drones. I saw it with the president of uh, Venezuela, Nicolas Maduro. He was on the stage giving a speech. And then there's a number of drones which came. They attempted to fire on his position, but they all collapsed and fell on the ground because they got too close to his signal jammers and whoever was controlling them lost control of those particular drones and they fell from the sky. I would play you the video, but uh, YouTube is very skeptic about uh, some of those videos. But if you just take a second or two and go to YouTube to search uh, Nicolas Maduro drone attack, or something like that, you will get to see it for yourself. Now, I recall telling you that the Secret Service does not trust anybody. That is the kind of training that they have. They are not trained. They are not trained to trust law enforcement officers like you and me. They look at all police officers with a fishy eye. They look at all military personnel with a fishy eye. Any parade that the president is walking through, they look at it with a fishy eye. And believe it or not, even fellow politicians. There was a time I saw a video of President Uhuru Kenyatta. They were at a function and they were all standing upright. And then the Speaker of the House at the time, Speaker Justin Muturi, was there. And he was constantly frisking his pocket. And one Secret Service soldier just touched his pocket to see what, what on earth is this Speaker carrying in his pocket and why is he frisking his pocket. And he discovered the speaker had nothing. Just look at this video. So these guys do not care who you are. 
You can be the immediate family of the president, they still suspect you. You can be the police commander, you can be whoever, inspector general, they do not trust you at any given time. And that is the best kind of training if you're going to provide security to a head of state. Because in this life, the people who plan for your downfall are not strangers. More often than not, it's immediate friends or family or business partners. And so because of that, they have to look at everyone, even the speaker of the house, Wetangula, with a suspicious eye. But as usual, that's just my opinion, guys. Do drop me your own comments in the comment section below. I'll do my best to read them and to give you a response. Now, in the event you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula, hit the subscribe button and you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. Alright guys, adios. This is Platoon Commander Troy Kanjani. The mission to God Town went south. Six of my men are down and the enemy has us pinned, requesting immediate air support. Over. Hold tight, soldier. Kenya Kwanza infantry is advancing on your position. Over. How will I know when they arrive? Over. <laughs> You'll know when the tide turns in your favor, Commander. Over.